Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. We are continuing our series on link list data structures. So this is our new series where we're going to talk about data structures. Again, just to reiterate, data structures are so, so important for the interview process. So um, kind of things that I think, at least for me, if I'm learning this kind of stuff, I know how I learn about things. Um, my kind of recommendation with any of these videos is watch it once, don't do any of the coding, just watch. Just watch and listen, don't code. <laughs> then the second time around, um, then you should code. Second time around, then you should code. If you're still not getting it, go watch somebody else's video on it or go read something, get different perspectives. I'm not gonna say the epiphany is gonna come from my channel. You might watch my channel and go watch somebody else and there it is, it snaps, whatever works for you go and do it because I understand the whole studying process. Sometimes you just have to hear it said different ways and then magically it clicks. So by all means, um, just listen first time around and then second time around, then start coding. Just to reiterate, what are linked lists? Well, linked lists are basically a collection of individual elements. We call them nodes. These nodes have two different components. One is a value. It could be a Boolean value. It could be a string. It could be an integer or float, whatever you want it to be. And then the second one is a pointer. That pointer is pointing to the next node in the list. And so we can visualize a linked list kind of like this, where it's individual nodes, where each node is pointing to the other node in the list. Now, we will see there are different, basically, types of linked lists. We can actually have, a uh, what is it? multi-linked list or something like that. Uh, I can't think of it on the top of my head right now. I don't know why. <laughs> but basically with those ones is we'll see that, hey, you can point forward and backwards because unfortunately one of the drawbacks is if, if I wanna do a linked list, I have to always go this direction first. So I have to go um, left to right, which can be a problem. And uh, sometimes we wanna be able to go backwards and not necessarily forwards. And then a performance profile for this particular uh, data structure is that it has an average insert and an average delete of constant, and then an average search of O of N. So it's linear. Uh, linear is actually pretty good. Uh, now for here, why is it linear? Well, if I wanna get to this point, I have to go to this one first, then this one first, and then finally this one. So basically on average, um, I'm gonna have to basically traverse the entire list uh, and that can be basically where it comes, you know, a problem or something like that. So in our last video, we created a node object. We talked about a list link object. We basically defined our node class object, and then we defined our link list, and we defined one method where we just insert a node, and it's always going to be inserted to the front of our link list. But what if we don't want to insert in the front? What do we do? Well, lucky for us, there is a way to do this. Well, let's move on to the next one. Let's insert at the end of our list. So we'll take self, the list itself, and then we'll take the piece of data that we wanna insert at the end. So it's kind of similar at this point. We're still gonna define a new node. And with this one, we're just gonna do new node equals a node object where we pass through the data. So now we've defined a node, it's got a piece of data in it and a pointer. Alrighty, and so we're also going to find the head node and that's gonna equal the linked list itself. It's gonna equal the head. Sorry, I'm moving my papers away. Okay, so what are some things that we need to think about when we're inserting? Well, what happens if there's not a head node? Because if we're trying to insert at the end, then the head node is just gonna be simply the new node that we're, we're, we're inserting, right? And so again, when, when you're thinking about this at an interview point, when you wanna make your code, you wanna obviously kind of make it more robust and it can handle these situations. So in the situation where we don't have a head, then we can't insert it at the end because it's just gonna be the head itself. And so really what that means is if the head node is none, then the head node is gonna equal the new node. And we can just return it. Otherwise, let's find the last node. Because we might have multiple nodes currently inserted in it, and so we might wanna find that last node. 
So the last node will currently equal uh, the head node. And what we're going to do is while last node dot get next does not equal none, keep going. Why am I writing it like this? Well, let's think about this. We want to go to the end of our list. We're going to start at the head, and we're basically going to keep calling next. And as long as there's a next, that means we haven't reached the end. It's only when get next returns none that we've reached the end of our list. Ah, but there's one final thing. We do need to call get next before we go on to the next iteration. Because if you think about it, this is just going to call on the first node, do it over again, do it over again, do it over again. Because you never really changed what that last node is. You never redefined it. Here we're redefining it, and then it's going to check again and see what happens. And so basically when it does equal the end, or when it does equal none, it means we've reached the end. And so what that means is we're going to take that last node, and we're going to call the set next method, and we're going to pass through that new node. And then we can also define the end property of our linked list. Because we've reached the end, so we should be able to just define that as the new node itself. Perfectly OK. So that's just another way of doing it. Um, again, really, what are we doing here? As long as there is a next node, it means we haven't reached the end, not the ned. But when we reach the end, set the node. Again, this is just, I like to write out the comments. I Don't worry so much about like, oh, well, you know, is it, is it proper commenting? Comment it in the way that helps reinforce the concept. For me, I have to talk naturally. I just have to kind of say, what am I doing at this step? What is this step doing for me? Whatever works for you, write the comments that you need to, the way you need to write it so that way it helps drive home the concept. Like for example, what I would be saying here is, if there isn't a head node, then that is the last node. <laughs> In a sense, like, because, you know, if we don't have a head node, then that will be the last node because there's no head at the beginning. Basically, we have an empty list. Okay. So when we do this, and we say insert from the end, we could do something like 90, right? And I can say end.data. Oh, sorry, I need to. Do that. So when I define the end node and then I call data, it returns the, the data that is stored in that node. But also keep in mind, what happens if I called get next? What would that do? Well, you're going to notice that nothing is basically returned back to us because there's nothing there. There's no node. There's no node that it's pointing to because you're at the end. In fact, it'll be even more apparent if you try to call the data property. Now you get this data error coming back saying, wait a minute, you're calling basically a property on something that doesn't exist. It, it's not going to work. So that's just the way of, of adding it to the end. So we've done the end, we've done the front. What about the middle? What happens if we want to insert it like in the middle of our particular node? Now middle being somewhere in between. It's not the front, it's not the beginning. It could be somewhere that's in between. Well, here, what would that look like? Well, we'll first insert middle. Now, as you guessed it, it's going to take self. It's going to take something else called middle node and then the data. Ah, uh, now we're making it a little bit more complex. So the first thing we need to do, um, if the middle node is none, then we need to let the user know, hey, you've selected a node that doesn't exist. The node you've selected doesn't exist. So right away, just kind of so you're aware, when we use this method, we're actually going to be passing through a node object. That, that's something that you, you need to understand. So we, we're going to basically grab one node, maybe that's the second node, and we're going to pass it through. And what we need to first do is check, does that node actually exist? If something comes back and it's like it's none or something like that, we've got a problem. We can't even go to the next step. And so 
once we've determined that, okay, it's basically not none, what we can do is we can say the new node is going to equal node and the data, because we're going to be passing through a new piece of data. It's just going to be stored in between our list. It's going to be stored in between our list. And so we're going to take that new node, and we're basically going to, <clears throat> we're going to take that middle node, and we're going to basically uh, point it to the next node. And so we're going to say new node, the new node that we created, set next <clears throat> equal to the middle node, and then we're going to say get next. So we're going to get that middle node, we're going to get the one after it, and we're going to set that new node to where it points to the middle node after that one. And then the middle node is we're going to set next to the new node. Okay? So the new node, the one that comes after it is going to be that middle node and then the one after that. And then the middle node, the one that we're going to set after that is just the new node. And so when we do this, what will this look like? Well, let's see. Let's first define the second node. So we'll say second node is equal to my linked list. We will grab the head and then get next. And then we will say linked list, insert middle, we'll pass through the second node and then we'll pass through something like 50. Okay, I keep doing that. I know press control enter at the top and then I do it at the second one. So um, right now we've inserted a node in the middle. It's kind of hard to see right now because we don't really have a mechanism at this point to actually print out all the values of our list. And so that's what we're gonna do next so that way we can see to make sure that, hey, did it actually insert all the information in our node? And so what we'll do is we'll define a new method called traverse that will take the linked list itself and we need to define the first node. And that's pretty straightforward. That's just gonna equal the linked list and it's gonna be the head node because the head node is the beginning node. And we're gonna say while node does not equal none, Uh, print node get data and then set the node equal to node get next and so really what is this doing set the new node equal to the old node after calling the get next method so after basically going to the, the node after it that will be the next one and so if I call linked list dot traverse and I'm going to make sure to call this one up here again because I did it before. Perfect. Okay, so now what we've seen is I inserted these two in the front, I inserted this at the end, and then I inserted this one in the middle. And then when I print out all the values, it prints them right after the other. So before moving on to the next one, let's take a step back, review kind of what we wrote, and see, again, do we understand what's going on? So... <laughs> This is really one of the advantages of that linked list because the insertion process is actually easier. We're not moving any values here. Hopefully you're noticing, we're not taking values and you know putting them in a different location in memory. Really what we're doing is we're just pointing, we're basically changing where the node is pointing to. So what we did here is we defined that new node because we're gonna be inserting a node. So we still have to define that node but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that new node and we're gonna say, hey, the node that comes after that is gonna be the node that we pass through, so the middle node in this case, after calling get next. So the node that comes after the middle node. So the new node and then the, the new node, so the new node and then the node that comes after the middle node. And then the middle node, the one that comes after the middle node is gonna be the new node. So hopefully that makes sense. So here, if the second one is 37, or sorry, th what is it? Uh, 35, 35. And then we insert the middle one, it's going to come after it. So it's going to be inserted after it, but before the end node. Before the end node. So hopefully that made sense. All right, so we've talked about traversing our node. And we've talked about inserting our node. 
let's talk about getting the list size. So maybe we want to determine how long is your linked list? How long is your linked list? So we'll define a new method. We'll call it list size. It will take the linked list itself. We'll have the current node equal the first node. And then we'll do have the current count equal zero because at this point we don't have anything. And so we'll say while current node, we'll say current count plus equal one. And then we're going to set the new current node to the old current node after calling get next. And so if I say linked list, linked list dot list size, oh, oh, I forgot to return. My bad. We have to return the count because right now it's not returning anything. It's counting it, but there's nothing that's actually returning. <clears throat> what did I do? Current node. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. I forgot my little brackets right there. Okay, now it works. I'm like, I know that should work. I've written it and I typed it before. <laughs> All right, so we traversed it and then we got the size. There are four elements in our linked list and that adds up, look at that. We got four elements there. So there's only four elements in our list. So at this point, what have we done so far? We've defined a node object. We have defined a linked list object. We have inserted a node in the front, we've inserted a node at the end, and we've inserted a node in between, so somewhere in between the front and the end. We have traversed our list, meaning that we can print out all the values, and we can return the list size. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about searching our list for our particular value, and then we're gonna talk about deleting nodes and deleting the list. And then we're gonna get on to the more interesting stuff, removing duplicates, and things along that nature. So if you have any questions at this point about traversing the linked list, getting the list size, inserting, and all that kind of fun stuff, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.